How's it going everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 9 tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about parallel compression. This is what you guys wanted to see from the survey that you've been taking. If you haven't seen the survey and want to vote on the tutorials you want to see, I will post a link in the description to go do that. So do it. Alright, so back to what I was talking about, parallel compression. Alright, so what we're going to want to talk about is what parallel compression is in general. Alright? In general, if we take a step back and look at what parallel compression is, we have one signal, or say we have a group of tracks together, say drums, because parallel compression is very good on drums, that you want to be grouping together. And those tracks, as they are grouped together, can be sent and split up into two different places. Well, the first place is going to just be the bare signal. It's going to be what the track, what the tracks, com the combination of the tracks will sound like. The other, the other place that the audio is going to be going is a very highly compressed version of that. All right. When you have a regular signal and a highly compressed version of that signal and you add it together, what's going to happen is those two, the combination of the two are going to thicken up and boost the actual like fatness, I guess you can say, of the tracks together. And so this is very good on drums, like I said, because they're nice tracks to group together. You can do this on multiple guitars, you can do this on vocals, basically anything that is easily grouped together. All right? Okay, so now that we have the general idea of what parallel compression is, I need I want to take a step back even farther and talk a little bit about compression in general. You guys know I like you, right? I sure hope so because I freaking made a PowerPoint presentation to explain this a little bit, alright? So what we have here is a beginning wave. This wave is an audio wave and what I labeled here is a transient. Transients are basically short periods of time where there's a very high amount of volume and so we can say for right now that the top of that wave is going to be that transient, alright? Next, what you're going to want to do to that track is you're going to add a compressor. And on that compressor, there's going to be a threshold that you set at a certain point. All right, and this is what this dotted line is right here. All right, once you start compressing that track, what the red, what the red wave is going to be is the actual compressed signal. All right, so the tops, anything above that threshold is going to be compressed by a certain ratio and that ratio is also being set in that compressor alright now what happens is that compressor you need to set it to add gain back to the track so that you're not decreasing the volume of the track and what that does is it keeps the peaks of the signal about the same place but it increases the bottoms of the wave now why is this happening and why do we want to do this in general all right. Number one, it gives it a nice thick fat tone. This is why we put compressors on most every single track inside of Logic, and any just in general we put compressors on any, every track. All right, is because it gives and brings out that thickness that we want from the track. And I keep using that word, but I hope you understand what it means. It, I mean, it just makes it uh, the signal just boosted and sound a little bit better to someone who's listening to it, all right? So why parallel compression, why compression in general? Because science, no joke. We're just doing this because science, all right? Next, transients aren't destroyed. If we go back and look at this picture, the transient is in the same spot. The compressed signal and the original signal both have the transient at the same spot. This is true unless you're doing some crazy compression techniques, uh, maybe multi-band compressors, stuff like that, that could destroy the actual um, transients, all right? Now, next it's softer to human ears, and because of this, it's easier to listen to, all right? As you can see, the actual tops of the waves are a little bit more wider, and what this does is it makes it so the transients um, just aren't as harsh, I guess you can say, all right? So um, it makes it a little bit easier for people to listen to, all right? And then finally, like I've been saying, fatness and thickness, compression does this, all right? So, how to do it in Logic. All right, so we have these four drum tracks that I'm going to be adding parallel compression to. If we go into our mixer, I can select one, shift click the rest of them, and then I'm going to be sending them to a certain bus, say bus 20. All right, and then that's going to be our original signal. I'm just routing the volume or the sound from these tracks 
into an auxiliary track, and then the auxiliary track is routing it to the output. So it's just basically a stop before it goes to the output that's being heard. All right. Then also I'm going to select another bus, bus 21. This is these are going to be found in the effect buses or the effect sends. All right, and I'm going to increase the amount of volume being sent to that track to about zero decibels. All right, and there we are. So I'm going to do that for every single one of our tracks. All right, and as you can see, auxiliary tree is three. Sorry, auxiliary three is going to be my regular track, and then auxiliary four is going to be bus 21, which is my effect buses, and this is going to be my parallel compression. So let's label that now. Drum para. And this is going to be our normal mix of our of the drums. And I'm going to call this drum mass or drum master. Alright. Alright, so like I said in the very beginning when we were thinking of the concept of this, we have these two right here, and this is what those two signals were breaking off to. Now we have these two signals, and they're both set at zero decibels. They're, just, they're both going to be playing at the same time, which means they're both going to be very loud. As the drums are going to be overwhelming. It's going to clip our output. So make sure to take these down a little bit. And then let's just play our track to see if, what's, what's, if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. All right, the drums are still a little bit loud in the mix, and it's clipping a little bit. All right, so there we are. We have volume in both the drum master and the drum para. Okay, now, like I said, we're going to heavily compress the signal. And if you haven't seen my video about compression modes, I highly suggest it. I will post a link in, uh, like, right next to my head or something. All right, so I'm going to choose opto. And for this heavy compression, I'm going to do about a medium and attack and medium release. But what I'm going to do a high amount of is ratio. I'm going to do it about 12. All right, in my knee, um, maybe a little bit lower of a knee. Okay. Now I'm going to be needing to edit this threshold until I get, I'd say, around a decibel reduction of around 15 decibels, maybe, um, 15 or more. All right, so we can play this and see what happens. Um, so yeah, let's let's do it. Um, let's edit this threshold to get a volume of around or a reduction of around 15 decibels. All right, and as you can see, it was up around 15 at when it reached the transients or the louder parts of the wave. All right. So uh, yes, we have this heavily compressed signal. Let's listen to it. So heavily, heavily compressed and distorted and something you would obviously not going to want to be playing. But when we mix it with the actual master, what's going to happen is it's going to bring out a very thick, thick tone. What I forgot to do here really quick is to add a little bit of gain to this track. Um, it's at 4 decibels of gain and I'm reducing it by 15 decibels, so that's quite a bit. So I'm going to up that to not, maybe, not 15, but maybe 7 or 8. Yeah, we'll just do eight. All right. So now the next portion of this is mixing these two tracks together to get a very nice, thick and full sound. All right. So let's do that now. Alright, so my parallel compression is just a little bit lower than my drum master. This is going to be different every time, so do not copy exactly what I have here. Okay? Okay. Practice and do this on your, do this on your own. Alright? Alright, so now I'm just going to do a before and after just to kind of see what the differences are. Alright, so here is before. And here is after.
all right? And if I wanted to go even farther and even deeper into this, I could even send these two tracks to another auxiliary track, and on that track I could limit it, I could, you know, EQ it against other groups of tracks, um, do the whole mixing thing, all right? Do the whole mixing thing. But that is generally how you do com parallel compression in Logic Pro 9. So everyone, thank you for watching. Like a bouse, you need to comment, rate, subscribe. And I will be seeing you very soon now that I'm trying to put videos out weekly. I'll say weekly. Yeah. Peace out.